Have I told you I gotten into golf? The last thing I need is another hobby, but I found golf and now it's got me. It's just fine, but I have found that I end up having golf stuff strewn all over the house. Like my sleeve of golf balls are here. This has been here since Christmas. Shoes, you never know where they're gonna end up. And my hat typically goes here. To fix that, I have built myself a golf bag holder. I've also built in some shelves to store anything else golf related so that everything has a home within my home to keep things looking nice and more importantly, findable. Five years ago, I actually built a double bag holder for a high school fundraiser. And since that turned out great, I simply took it and modified it for one bag. Let me show you the building process. I first started by moving my choice of material to my workbench. This entire build can be gotten from a single sheet of plywood. And I decided to use a walnut veneer. I used the help of my armor workbench to get it to my plywood workbench, then used my Triton track saw to start cutting it up into pieces. Most of the pieces are square or a rectangle, so a track saw is great for these parts. However, on the curved parts, I would draw them on first with a pencil, then use my Triton jigsaw to cut them. After getting one curved piece done, I used it as a template to make the second. If you're interested, I do have a set of plans for this one, as well as the double bag holder over on my website. Both plans come with a cut list and a material shopping list. Once I cut all of my parts needed out, I set up my workstation to start edge banding the edges. I would stick whatever part I was working on in my Triton Super Jaws and apply the walnut banding to any edges that will be exposed in the end. Know that you can get ply nut, ply nut? Know that you can get plywood with different veneers on it, meaning if dark walnut isn't your taste or doesn't fit your home, then you can get cherry or red oak or a large assortment of others. Then you just need to buy the same edge banding that will hide the plywood core, or in my case, the MDF core. Edge banding the curves of the sides is tricky, but can be done if you're patient. I would work my way from one side to the other, using the tip of my iron to get into the curved portion. However, I do hear that a heat gun works wonders on concave curves like this. If you get down eye level to the banding, you can see when it adheres and where it pops up. Make sure to press it firmly down on both sides before continuing. Once the entire edge is done, trim the excess. I would do this with a chisel, but you can use several different tools, including a box blade or an edge band trimmer. Okay, next is drilling in pocket holes. On my first bag holder, I went with dados for the joinery, which is just fine, but it is overkill. After making all of my boards, I pulled out my armor pocket hole jig and started drilling. The special thing about this jig is once you place your material in its jaws, it automatically sets the collar on the bit to the needed location. It also sets the placement of the pocket hole at its needed location. So instead of making three adjustments separately, the jig sets everything by you simply locking onto your material. Armor also intentionally made the height of their jig so that the user can use scrap two by fours as outriggers for supporting wide material. This is a very handy feature. And next up is sanding. I put on my stealth mask respirator and got to work. And this is one pro to using some sort of veneer plywood. Very little sanding is required. In fact, be careful when sanding as you don't wanna go through the veneer and expose the core. This step is mostly for fully getting the edge banding completely flush and removing any of those small strings of dried glue off. Then also knocking off any burrs left around the pocket holes. I do a quick pass over the entire part as well, but again, making it quick and light. I'm only using 220 grit on this stage. And now you're gonna see this project will really begin to take shape quickly. It is on to assembly. The main thing to pay attention to when using pocket holes is to assemble things in a way that won't cut off drill access to the next set of holes. I started by attaching the runners to the bottom of the bottom. These will act as feet for the entire unit as well as support for the floor of it although this piece doesn't experience a tremendous amount of weight. For these, you can see I'm using some wood glue, then a brad nailer to attach them. And for this entire project, I'm using DAP's Weldwood wood glue. To attach the sides, I figured it would be easiest if I tilted the unit on what will be the back. I used a spacer as the sides aren't mounted flush with the back. And this is so that the back, which will be added on later, can sit flush with it instead. With both sides attached, I attached the footer, which spans in between both side pieces. I attached wood glue to all joints, then also made sure I was using the appropriate length of pocket hole screw that wouldn't poke out the side. 
if you don't remember which length goes with what material thickness, Armour has a chart on the side of their jig. You can find your material thickness, then follow it over to see the screw length needed. Armour also color codes the screws so that in this case, I look for my yellow screws. See, taking shape quickly. Let's add the center divider. This one is the only part I left dadoed in because I didn't want the pocket holes to show on either side. I applied glue to the joint and then worked it in. Getting up on the workbench was the easiest way to get the job done. This way I could use a mallet to gently persuade it to seat all the way down. For adding the shelves next, I flipped the unit over on its back once again, then started by attaching what will be the topmost shelf. If you start with the bottommost shelf, you'll end up killing your drill access to attach things. So just be mindful about that. Now you can simply measure down on both sides and attach the shelf, but I like to cut spacers and clamp them in place so that I can simply place the shelf up against the spacer and know that it's in the right location. After one shelf is in, I move the spacers and repeat it. I don't know if you can tell, but before attaching each shelf, I'm using a scrap of material on the bottom. And this is to set the distance properly off what will be the back, which will account for the next step of putting on the back. Let's do yet another flip around to see the progress. Now let's repeat the attachment method, but with the back parts. With all of the other parts being in first, these parts should tuck in nicely to their locations and be flush with the back of the sides. If you go with the veneer plywood like me, look at both sides before drilling your pocket holes. This way you can choose which face will be the show face and which will end up hidden like these faces here. We are almost done, so hang in there. Ta -da! Cute. I move the unit around to face forward, then attach the last two members on the front. The swoopy part will be to cradle my bag, and the piece on the left upper cabinet will create a lip so round objects can't roll away. This will be, oh man. I didn't edge pan that. Okay, I'll go back and fix that. Don't look at it right now. All right, you can look at it. Just don't judge me for it. But no problem. I just heated back up my iron and attached two small pieces of edge banding. This works, but it makes trimming the edges more difficult as I had to cut a straight line without getting into the edge banding beneath it. Woohoo! What a simple build, but oh, how it will bring so much function to my space. I don't yet know what I'm gonna put here. It's a good excuse to buy more golf stuff. I had to try it out real quick, but once I tested it out, I next gave it a good wipe down, then applied a clear coat of finish to it. This not only deepens that walnut coloring, but also gives it some protection. I propped the entire thing up on some two by fours and used a roller to apply the finish. After letting it sit overnight, I moved it to the house and collected all of my miscellaneous golf things to organize them in one place. I was thinking I would need to tilt the entire unit to keep the bag from falling forward, but there are zero issues with it. If you don't have room or permission to put a unit like this in the house, then another great option is to place it in the garage. At the end of the day, just making a dedicated home for anything golf related will drastically help with organizing. I wanna thank this video sponsor, which is Crescent Tools. I've been using a wide variety of Crescent Tools. One of my favorites that I use most often is the Lufkin Tape. This comes from their Shock Force line, and while it does come in standard color, I personally choose to use the Night Eye version, which is high visibility, but with no glare. Both versions come with two-sided tape and in large numbers. And I'll tell you this, after using a tape for so long, there is no going back to the smaller print tapes for me. These come in 16, 25, and 35 feet. And if you know where to look, even an eight foot keychain size. What? You don't carry a tape in your purse? Another tool I've been impressed with is their shears. I recently grabbed these for a project over traditional aviation shears and love their compact size, but effectiveness. If you can kill a few ounces on every tool in a tool pouch, it definitely makes a difference at the end of the day. Also in the cutting family is their scissors. A great pair of shop scissors is worth their weight in gold. And these have a spot in mine. It comes with the full metal core, which gives two times the strength and a four inch cut length. If you're interested in picking up these tools or checking out the rest of my favorites, there is a link for you down in the description. Again, if you would like to build your own, then I do have a set of plans for the single bag as well as the double bag over on my website. I've also linked to everything I used in the project down below for you, as well as some of my favorite golf courses in the area, just in case you ever visit Central Texas and are also a golfer. I'll see you on my next project.
Thank you so much for checking out this video. Be sure to also check out my website because I sell lots of useful things, such as these fraction and decimal charts. They're not only cool shop decor, but they're also functional. If you're interested in getting yours, you can click right here.